Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined each and every week by Jill Bryan. Hey Jill, how's hello, it going? Hello, hello. Hey, doing? Hi. Doing all right? <laughs> really good, yes. Sneezing? No more sneezing? No more sneezing. I've been ha having allergy attacks, but all is good now and it's a beautiful day outside. <laughs> uh, it's a bit warm here. It is. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're getting into that. We kind of had that false start. It's like, hey, it's spring. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Maybe we'll get open. When it's like, psych, it's winter again. I'm like, ah, oh, fine. But now it's definitely, I can feel the heat. I, can, oh. I, I look forward to each and every summertime here with you. You know what? This show's not too bad because it's reasonably short. It's brutal doing Linux game guest. Mm, yes. What, what, do you, what do you do with the uh, studio? You insulate it from sound. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and thus making it hotter. <laughs> it it's just an <laughs> oven, even with the AC on. I have one little AC vent in this old house in this room, just zzz, and I'm like, oh, it just melt. It gets hot enough to cut the camera off some nights. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's fun time. What have you been up to, man? Anything new? Oh wow. Well, Something really fun is I did an interview with the An Ordinary People podcast about my history in Linux, computers, and how I started podcasting here on LWW. And it was uh, released after um, uh, last Wednesday after our show here on LWW. So that was really cool. And um, I, it, was a, it was a fun in interview. And make sure to go uh, listen to it on YouTube, on Spotify, or iHeartRadio. It's on lots of different podcast things. <laughs> so the name of it's Unordinary People. Yes. Right. U-N-O-R-D-I-N-A-R-Y people. I know. it's. <laughs> I, I hope you guys get that just in case they spelt unordinary with like lead speak. It was like yeah. <laughs> U-N-O-R-337. Yes. <laughs> no, they didn't. It's just regular unordinary unord. Yeah, go check that out. Yeah. I've been playing around with a couple of things. Um, I know most of you, maybe there's one other person out in the audience, maybe in the future you're going back listening to this because I have that uh, RME AIO Pro sound card that I use for the show. Got a really good deal on it, got it used. And um, unfortunately, the professor, the gentleman, who was developing the open source drivers passed away this year, like right at the beginning of the year. Oh boy, poor Ben. And it was one of those things we found out on, like poor him, poor him, family. forget about me. Oh yeah, poor him, yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, he, he had done a lot of good oh, a lot work of good with work. audio and stuff, yeah, over the years and like VR way back in the day and mixed reality. Yeah, I didn't go, oh, that is terribly inconvenient, how rude of him, no. I was like, oh man, no. that, that, that sucks. And all this is like way outside of my wheelhouse, but as with most things, when I do like a guide on how do you set something up under Linux, especially with the audio stuff, that's all you're going to find when you do a search. So we're getting to the point to where you're dealing with bit rot with the drivers where they're not working with the latest kernel. So we're trying to, we got a branch uh, updated to work with 5.18 newer, and I've updated the guide to get that installed and that is what i've been working on this week making sure that's a smooth transition because we're already seeing the github issues of like it's not compiling with this and this is because we were talking in the pre-show go back and listen to that if you're a patron about how everything's shipping with kernel 6.0 now because linux moves so mm -hmm. fast right you don't think you yeah. know this time last year we were on like 515. wow times have changed also if you didn't uh catch it one of our biggest budget how-to guides came out on saturday it was a months long production that we were able to release. And I'll show you how to touch a tennis ball to a wall. Mm -hmm. Yes, April Fools. It was an April Fools, Jill, because <laughs> I did exactly what I said in the video. Yes, there, you did. There, this there is was, true. There was no joke. That was uh, it was like psych. April Fools is like nope. That's all that video was. Some people <laughs> enjoyed it. They got they had fun with it. Had some really good comments on that video on YouTube. And other yeah. people are absolutely dead inside and have no humor. I'm like, yeah. come on. <laughs> I get it. Listen, I'm as irritated by April Fool's as anybody in the tech industry, especially when it's like during the week. Because if it's during a news cycle week, you don't know what to believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I was happy it was Saturday this year because to me it was more, more fun. Because right. again, you weren't having to 
to separate it from real news and, and fake news. Right. <laughs> Let's have some fun with it. And, you know, if you're of a certain age, you remember uh, Slashdot way, way back in the day when it went all pink oh, and we yeah. had OMG ponies for an entire day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That was delightful. And, you know, usually, you know, I, you get suckered every now and then. I probably spent half the day believing Along with the rest of the internet, uh, Think Geek got me one time with the uh, George Foreman USB grill. Oh, yes, 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 that's right. <laughs> I had forgotten about that. I was like, oh, man, that, that, and I was like, oh, you got me. And actually, it might have been last year, somebody did an uh, excellent play, because we were almost getting ready for that evening uh, to record Linux Seamcast Weekly. And they were very sly about it, and they were like, um, Intel for the New York CPUs are going to be leveraging their CPUs on the card uh, for yeah. processing. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess that makes sense. And like, then we put two and 13 together. Like, oh, that was an April Fool's spring. Jeez. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> well played. Well played. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. Um, I finished the OBS thing. I finished doing all the uh, auto recording. So if you've been looking to learn how to build your own version, customized version of OBS and put it in a Debian package, that's going to be available to you. I will have that up for patrons to take a look at. The awesome people, our editing crew, are our first line of defense of me making grammatical errors or other mistakes in videos. That'll go out for you a lot uh, to take a look at over the weekend and pick apart. And we'll make any revisions necessary and we'll get that out to everybody else later next week. But mm -hmm. let's talk about... Ubuntu with cinnamon because we talked about cinnamon a couple of times over the past couple of weeks, Jill. Because yeah. uh, they're officially part of uh, the Ubuntu spin thing, right? Yeah. So yeah, Ubuntu cinnamon is now an official Ubuntu flavor, and actually, it will be official when Ubuntu twenty three point oh four Lunar Lobster is released on April third on April twentieth, not April thirtieth, April twentieth. Ubuntu cinnamon, you know, it takes an Ubuntu base and layers the gtk based cinnamon desktop environment over over it and uh, um, uh actually cinnamon is one of my favorite uh desktop environments i i i really like it for its simplicity um ease of use especially for the new user it's, it's really good um for those coming from windows and uh but it has the one of the cool features is is nemo is used as the, as the default file manager and ubuntu's yaro yaru is installed as the default gtk icon and cinnamon theme and it looks beautiful i i love the uh cinnamon colored uh, theming and uh lots of other cinnamon based settings and tweak tools are included these you know, they allow you to customize and extend the Cinnamon desktop with all kinds of extra goodies with applets, themes, and other content from the online Cinnamon Spice Hub. And something I wanted to talk about a little bit was is Joshua Pesach. I'm not sure if that's the pronunciation of correctly of his last name, but Joshua is the Ubuntu Cinnamon lead. And the Ubuntu Cinnamon remix team has been you know, working on an official status in Ubuntu's family of flavors for four years, if you can believe that. They've been working really hard. And I've known Joshua in the Linux community for quite some time and have been following his progress on Ubuntu Cinnamon. And I want to point out that Joshua, when I first met him, he was only 10 years old. <laughs> but when he started uh, this project, he was only 11 years old four years ago. So congratulations, Joshua, on this fantastic achievement. <laughs> I think this is like important things to remember. Like, um, you, you don't, it just works both ways because yeah. remember a couple of months ago, it might have been several months ago, half a year ago, it could have been 30 years ago for all I know at this point, times are relevant, right? Yeah. Um, we were talking about the uh, person who was bringing back the mirror desktop. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were quite young. They were a teenager, but never... Never discount that, you know. You think yeah. about like the drive and energy that you had back when you were a teenager. Stick with it, and good things come of it. Like mm -hmm. this, really. The you know, I'll take the same bit of contention uh, that they did with uh, Ubuntu. Uh, what was that? OMG Ubuntu. Yeah. Dot co. To UK. There'll be a link in the show notes. Was uh, the default image editor is GIMP. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I had this happen one time on Debian, and it was my own fault. It was me playing around with something, and I had, whatever reason, BMPs. And uh, J- no, it was uh. JPEGs, because BMPs I'd had set to open with GIMP, because naturally. Uh, we're opening with all the JPEGs, which normally just opens with like a little image viewer, right, from GNOME. And it was opening with, and it was driving me up the wall. Because, like, GIMP, I don't care how fast of a PC you have. Yeah, it's slow, it's slow at loading. It, it <laughs> takes advantage. It takes a second yeah. or two to take a look. And I just need to take a quick, you know, just a little peek at that. And I'm like, we don't need to bring GIMP into this relationship. So I had to go find the way to do that. So maybe change that to, like, risotto or something, you know, lighter. Then go. Yeah, definitely. I think Finn, we've all done that too. I've I've made that mistake before. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, it tries to be clever. Um, I don't know about other file managers, but the one I spend most of my time with is a file manager called Sudar. And it comes with XFCE. Yeah. And it tries to be nice. You know, if I right click on something and I say open with, and it'll give me a list of applications. It's like, hey, I'm aware that this uh, file type opens with, you know, let's say a WAV file. It's going to say Audacity. Do you want to open it with Reaper? Do you want to open it with whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once you pick that particular application, it moves that up automatically as the default. Yeah. For the next time. And you're like, no, I just (laughs) needed that to open it with that one time for that. You know, it's like the one time I might have needed to open something with GIMP, right? Yeah. So then it becomes the default. (laughs) I I understand. I understand. It's trying to be clever. You know, it's a good thing. You know, the good outweighs the bad on that. (laughs) Yeah. So I've been, you know, playing with Ubuntu Cinnamon uh, since uh, yesterday's daily build. And I've been very impressed. And and they did fix it. There is a web browser now, and it's uh, Mozilla Firefox for the win. <laughs> so I'm I'm happy to see that. So uh, some of the the things that were missing in the previous builds are are getting updated and fixed. So I'm sure they'll fix the uh, <laughs> the image uh, default <laughs> to GIMP <laughs> soon. <laughs> I would hope so. How long do you think it's going to be before uh, Canonical starts shipping Microsoft Edge as the default? Oh, boy. Uh, I don't want to think about that. Although, I have to say, uh, Microsoft Edge is a very fast browser. <laughs> and it's, it's very, very quick. <laughs> well, I wonder if it's possibly as fast as Mulvan. Ah. Yeah. Free the nice internet from bit. mass surveillance <laughs> with a Mulvad browser. What is it? Well, it's a privacy-focused web browser developed in collaboration with Mulvad VPN, the project. Uh, it's a Tor browser to use without the Tor network. And, uh, of course, you can use it with a VPN service, da-da-da-da-da. And they go through the whole thing. And what is it? I, You know, when you see a new browser, I'm like, what is this really? You know, let's take off the mask. And at the end of the day, this is uh, it's open source, but it's rebranded Firefox internals. And I was surprised because this thing is really fast. It's snappy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you can't say that it's not snappy. And I thought it was Chromium based just by the raw speed of it. I'm like, no, it turns out it's Firefox. They're very, very clear about their business model. Though. This is why I was going to give them a mention. They just come right out and they're like, there's no tracking, no ad stuff. The way we support this is hopefully you will get the Mulvad VPN drill. And it's reasonably priced for the VPN service, right? Oh, yeah. It was only $5 a month. I, lo- I looked into it because I wanted to test their service with the browser. So, you know, I, I am looking for a new VPN. So, you know, maybe I'll go with Mulvad. I, w- I was really impressed by this, the speed of this browser and um, how well everything's integrated. Like you can the- get the extension for other browsers, too, for, right. of course, Firefox and Chrome. They get a bunch of stuff in here, you know, just digging through it. Uh, the DNS lookups out of the box are done with Mulvad's encrypted DNS service. So they got that going on and browser mm-hmm. tracking protection. You know, Firefox has uh, against fingerprinting and uh, plus the ones that used by the Tor browser. And if you're wondering, like, what's Mulvad? That seems like a weird name for it. It's a Swedish name for Mole. Yes. <laughs> that was good. Yes. <laughs> It's so cute. It's a cute little animal. It's got a, a mole. hat on it. <laughs> yeah, and and so uh, me and Ven were talking about this earlier, and yeah, this this browser was really zippy. That was one of the first things I noticed about it was how fast it was at launching and just uh, loading pages. 
And it's open source and free of charge, whether or not you are, you know, Mulviad VPN user or not. And it is actually a browser built by the Tor project team and distributed by Mulvad. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really, <laughs> it, what's cool about this is the Tor browser is actually kind of slow. So oh, it's <laughs> because way, it's using it, the it, it's onion. It's usable and, yeah. now. Yeah, right. it's it's much faster than it was. I don't like saying it it's slow yeah. these days yeah. because when I say slow, people are thinking <laughs> about the first time they messed around with anything on Tor before we had a Tor browser when we were oh, just connecting yeah. to Tor, that and was, it would take yeah. minutes. No, I mean it's usable these days. It's uh, roughly much the speed faster. of like your mobile data connection. Yeah, so it's uh, they've you know have done a lot of improvements to the uh, Tor browser, which I I use a lot on my uh, on, on Android, uh, but it's. It's nice to see, you know, all that innovation going into the Mulvad browser. It's mm -hmm. like they almost, it's like they cleaned up code or something because it's even faster. Well, so. they ripped out a bunch of the stuff that you're not even going to deal with. Like there's no telemetry in this and it does come with um, third party uh, blocking for trackers. It comes with yeah. the block origin built into it, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And it does like a very like one to one sim well a very similar fingerprint for everybody that's using it to confuse anybody trying to collect metadata on this. Yeah, and it does that thing where your web page is letterboxed a little bit, so they can't even get proper uh, screen resolution metrics from you. So th it's neat. Like it goes a long way. It's something to go check out. And again, it's open yeah, source. Absolutely. It's free. And the reason I mentioned it because they came right out of the gate and they're like listen we're not trying to sell you anything we'd like it if you use our vpn but we're trying to do you know we're trying to do a good here yeah create a nice secure uh, web browser yeah and you know i've used tor browser to like say i've used the tor browser but that's kind of mm -hmm. the extent of it uh, <laughs> i use it a lot actually <laughs> i i don't like you know we always have this conversation we were talking in the pre-show i'm like yeah, isp knows what you're doing yeah. And they sell that data. Like if I'm a company that wants that, so I'm just going to buy it directly from your ISP. That's cute. Um, you know, it, it, I take some precautions, you know, I set up encrypted DNS on my router. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, but I just yeah. did that for the experience of like, how is this new thing? You know, when the DOH stuff was coming out and like, you know, I wanted to learn how to just set it up on a microtech and I did. So I haven't, but that's about it. I run U block and I run privacy badger and script block. Those are yeah, the, script block. no script. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. I don't really go out of my way, but if you want that, you know, I don't like saying this is an extra layer of security, but maybe this is a, your flavor of security, right? Yeah. 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 And what, what is interesting about it, Ven, is that they, it's, instead of using the Tor net, network, you're using the Mulvad uh, VPN, which, which makes sense. So they're, tr they're, they're kind of, they kind of customized it so that it, um, uh, you know, has all the, the normal uh, Tor browser tools you're used to, but instead of going through their service, you're going through an, someone else's service. So it's interesting. And if you want to download it, there'll be a link in the show notes. And it's just a Tor file. Just decompress it. You can run it right yeah. from the directory. There's no need to install anything. So you can consider it portable in its own special one. Yeah. Yeah, go play with it. Uh, leave us a comment if you think it's good or if it's bad or maybe it's Good, bad, and you're confused. That'd be even better. That'd be a longer <laughs> comment. <laughs> Up next, uh, we get a little bit of a April Fool's uh, announcement. But before we get to that, I want to say thank you to everybody supporting the show. Everybody helping uh -huh. us out over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. It keeps our little dog and pony show alive, aloud, and up. And that doesn't work with independent, does it? Oh, and then. yeah. <laughs> we tried. There was Aww. an attempt there. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff you can get. We have a bunch of different levels from Chairling all the way up to Corporate Overlord with uh, bonus rewards and features. Hop into our Discord, get access to that pre-pre-super shows and that we bring up for an extra, I think about five extra hours of content each and every week if you need something to listen to or watch because there's a video version as well. And as I said in the beginning of the show, I like to put stuff out. You're going to be the first one to see. I don't really like paywalling stuff. That's not really my style. Mm -hmm. But, you know, early access has its place. You know, get first crack at it. And I, I think that is fair. But we have somebody new this week that we need to thank. Jill Bryan. Yeah. So Jonas Rulo is our, our new patron. Thank you, Jonas. 
Yes. I, awesome. I want to give Looking Jonas forward. credit because Jonas said we were talking. Uh, <laughs> it looks like it's very persistent because you'll see in the right hand in the video version, it says pledge, pledge, pledge. It seems like Jonas was having issues trying to get it set up. And that has yeah, happened. I've seen that, that happen happens. before anymore. Then you get the message. They'll, they'll pop into Discord like, finally. I'm like, all right. Hey, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> Also, um, if you're a Twitch subscriber or a patron, uh, I want to invite you to come race with us and hang out with us on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, we had so much fun. It I is. love the tracks this week, Ben. They're really Thank cool. You. I mean, <laughs> if you're looking for, you know, a crippling addiction or you would like to rekindle a former crippling addiction, Trackmania is a nice retro racing game from like 2011 it runs on anything runs out of the box on proton you don't need anything special we got a private server that we set up we throw in 14 tracks every tuesday we play around figure out the ones that we like practice on the server it's open 24 7 so whenever and you can do asynchronous uh time checks against each other if you want because everything's saved in backup and it's just, all the data is right there on screen and on friday we do a points match again just for fun and it's it's not racing so much as it is puzzle platforming. And I can't yeah, emphasize that enough. Go watch some videos. It's silly. You know, I try to maximize silliness and fun for all the tracks. <laughs> we have maps that are so fun and funny uh, to play. We call them LOL maps. <laughs> yeah. They're... Uh, <laughs> It's just an excuse to get together. So if you've been looking yeah. for that, you know, I know getting on an age is getting harder to make friends. There you go. Come hang out with us. Try yeah, before you buy. Now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Pine64 did something that is, I consider brave, but borderline foolish, Jill. And that is, you know, as we were saying, yeah. April Fool's releasing yes. during the week. But do you do an actual news announcement and yeah. <laughs> On April Fool's Day when it's not during like how do you how how, how do we do that? Yeah. So uh Pine Sixty Four, you know, has some new goodies coming this month. And uh one of which is the Star Sixty Four will um um system on chip will be a uh, single board computer will be available for purchase. Just gonna gloss over the unicorn, huh? <laughs> yeah. I was gonna I know that was such a cute picture that uh <laughs> There's Woo nothing Cash. cute about that. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I saw that at the end of the hallway, I'm running, Jill. I'm not trying to give that thing a hug. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously there's some April Fool's in this announcement. There's got to be, but maybe not. <laughs> so uh, so not only is the Star 64 uh, system on, on chip or single board computer available, but we have the Pine Tab 2 and Pine Tab V is supposed to launch next well, week on April v 11th. is the April Fool's joke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it, it, it means uh, time, the Pine Tab V means very good. <laughs> so I guess that's their April Fool's, or is it? Really? Well, uh, the V stands for very early or vaguely functional, to yeah. which when you're dealing with um, <laughs> Pine 64, you're like, I don't know if that's a joke or not, guys. Yeah, uh, because, I know. Yeah, because you expect to get vaguely functional prototype hardware. That's kind of the true. business, right? This is so true, Ben. <laughs> it took this me a minute so of reading that. I'm like, oh, this is the April Fool's Bursh. Okay, all right. Because I was like, okay, you guys are just releasing a new updated tab. I'm like, okay, I get it. It took me a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, same same here, because usually, uh, you know, Wukash, when he writes those articles, they're all very, you know, serious and all, and it has all the, the techs, the tech and bells and whistles of all their products and all their updates. So it just takes us aback uh, a back a little <laughs> bit <laughs> to realize there is a little bit of April Fool's in, in that well written article. <laughs> so the, the Pine Tab 2 actually will ship with a build of Danked Nix. Arch Linux for ARM with KDE Plasma desktop. And it's built around the Peppy Rock Chip RK3555. And this has four ARM Cortex A55 cores and ARM Molly G610 MP4 graphics. And we, we had uh, mentioned uh, about the Pine tab uh, before in a previous episode, but I wanted, since it's been a while, I wanted to uh, refresh on the specs. Because <laughs> it, it is, uh, 
the uh, it has a 10.1 inch IPS touch display and is equipped with a pair of USB C ports, a micro HDMI out, a 3.5 millimeter audio out, and a micro SD card slot, and a five megapixel rear camera and two megapixel front facing camera are also on the Pine tab too. I thought that was a Peltier module and I'm like, I haven't seen one of those <laughs> since like 99, 2000 when I was playing with them. And yeah, sure enough, that's uh yeah. If you throw a Peltier cooler on uh, the back of an <laughs> SOC, that's going to work. Yeah. And um, actually these are going to be very, very reasonable. So the entry level um, $160, model offers four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabyte of internal EM EMMC storage. And the $200, $209 model offers eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 EMMC storage. But both models come with a matching detachable backlit keyboard case, which comes standard um, and included in the price, which is really, really nice. And as for the Pine Tab V, well, who, who knows, <laughs> Ven? Maybe this is your mythical unicorn of an x86 single board computer. <laughs> maybe it is. I mean, <laughs> or maybe it's just April Fools. <laughs> you know, somebody is going to be able to release something because I, you know, I'm looking through this and like there, I was looking at this video here with the um. Uh, Salvador showcased a number of uh, retro PC games running on the Box 86, and we've talked about that on Saturdays. Uh, oh, running yeah. On Pinebook Pro, and I'm looking at, you know, the OG Unreal Tournament, 1999, running a treat. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. And I mean, you know, it's running at 60 FPS, which mm -hmm. is... Very nice. Pretty just interesting. Um, on an arm, yeah. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing. Like, uh... Let's just talk about the regular Pine Tab too, because yeah, I, I'm always keeping the original Pine Tab. They were able to make like ten of them, and you know, they didn't really sell that one. They couldn't get the parts for them. I forget exactly what the reasons were, but they do bring up a couple of things about Pine Tab too, because uh, it's going to be shipping with Arch, which yeah. I thought was interesting. Um, Dank Nick Nix. Dank Nix, yeah, Arch. yeah, Dank Nix. <laughs> so it's going to be shipping uh, with KDE Plasma. Uh, Wi-Fi is going to be disabled on it because it don't work so well. And um, they take some time in this article to address uh, some of the valid concerns about the Potato SoC, the mm -hmm. CPU GPU that is on Pine Tab Two because it ain't that great. Like I don't care how you want to spin it, spin it, it's not that great. And we're talking about concerns about like without built-in uh without hardware acceleration can this thing play a 1080p 60 youtube video and magic eight ball comes back on that and it's like yeah maybe maybe but you don't have to worry about it because uh the panel resolution they finally said that maybe they've said it before i couldn't find it uh, initially was is 1280 by 800 yeah, we did. Yeah, I remember we were looking for that before um, on a previous episode. Yeah, didn't find I'm sure it. they've put it out. That was the first time I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, again, these are not meant as, you know, full on consumer products, meaning way, shape, form, or fashion. So you got to you gotta look through the right lens, you know, but I got to look at like, can I justify buying? It would just be to play around with because. Even like your lower mid range tablets right now are sporting two two K on yeah. screens. So there is that. Um also This is gonna sound rude. This is gonna sound rude. But it's not. It's not. If you're gonna show off um the performance of something, I'm like, let me show you guys the browsing performance of the Pine Tab 2. I'm like, okay. Let's check that out. Let's go to a page with anything on it. Like that's got some photos on it, but let's go to like hit the verge, man. Because like none of this is intensive. I would expect anything to be able to run this. Free pro tip. Jo has no opinion because she doesn't want to say anything <laughs> negative at any point. I'm just being honest with you because you need to hear it. That's it, yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting uh, to seeing, you know, the performance of, 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 of the tablet. And I have a feeling that thir- by the time they come out with their Pine Tab 3, it'll probably be 1080 and a faster processor. Well, I think the best thing you can do with the Pine Tab 2 is what they're doing right now, managing expectations. Yeah. It's like, this is what you're going to get. This is what it can do. Um, I don't see a big market for it. But, you know, maybe, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? No. Nice. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this critter. That's right. That's cool. That's a Euro rack. And no, they're not playing Galaga (laughs) on a Euro rack (laughs) module. It'd be neat if they could. You know what? You could probably make it happen. What is this? Well, this is the build guide. If I can get to the right page. This is the EuroPi, completely re- reprogrammable Eurorack module based around a Raspberry Pi. I know you can't buy one. Aha, wait a minute, Pi Pico, which actually exists out in the wild. This got my attention because I know people love their synth modules, and this allows you to DIY that comes with a full bill of material that you can put together. And, you know, if you want to make like oscillators, sequencers, quanti- quantizers, quantizers, I don't know, that's a word harmonics, anything you can come up with, because you can program these using Python, which is relatively easy to pick up as far as things are concerned. And there's build guides for it. If you want to walk through everything you need, and these are completely fully compatible with your standard Euro rack, pop them in. They got a nice OLED display. And I just think it's really, really slick. Mm -hmm. Personally, don't care about synthesizers, but still, this is one of those things I wanted to share with the people that do and i think that's uh what really blew me away with the just looking at the build guide here i'm like you really took some time with this yeah (laughs) and his uh the video is really good too it goes in extreme detail and even all the different scripts that are available to run in python Mm -hmm. it's really cool and um i like some of the names like he had one that was called uh um, hamlet (laughs) and and one that's called uh strange attractor and the Turing machine, <laughs> and they all produce different different sounds at different frequencies. And this is just, it's, it's really cool because, it, you know, I'm a huge fan of synth music. And a lot of the synth musicians are actually no strangers to programming. So having a Python-based module seems, you know, right up their alley. Because, you know, even in the older days before everything was computer generated, when um, you were using analog synths, uh, th- those were essentially scripts they were making with their like their modular mogs um, and doing all the patch cabling and whatnot. That was <laughs> to remember all the, all their sequence was like writing scripts. So in today's day, you know, using Python is a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, I think this is just extraordinarily neat. And yeah, it's amazing. There's 24 uh, projects going on right now with uh, the scripts that users have contributed you can work on your own python's reasonably easy to pick up yourself Mm -hmm. and maybe you you don't want to deal with like soldering and all this this is the neat part you can get a complete dyi kit now you got to put it together yourself i shouldn't have said that what i meant to say is like if you don't want to like source all the individual parts you can get a bag with everything in it for like 106 pounds which i think is incredibly reasonable yeah it really is for this, and it's a slick looking. I mean, it's something you absolutely wouldn't mind having sitting in your uh, rack. I think it looks nice. So there you go. Links in the show notes, of course. Build your own, and you know, I really wish we would see some of this technology with like DSP processing, getting what it is mm. with, um, you know, compressors, limiters, and other things that I typically use. Like I would like to see. M- you know, expansion modules. I, I my brain goes into a lot of places. I'm like, yeah, sensor neat, but how about the stuff I want? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I I see, I see, I see that for you know to progress audio <laughs> as well. Just, just so. to do neat things, and this is yeah. absolutely neat. All right, that's it. We've run for 34 <laughs> minutes and 42 seconds, Jill. So we need to run yeah. some credits. Okay, time get for out some of here. credits. <laughs> We got a credits. 
Boom. Look at that. Hey, Basil, yes. thanks for that resub. 39. Yay, Basil, thank you. And thanks again to Jonas Rulio for his new patronage. Very nice. And hopefully we'll see you in Discord soon. <laughs> And look at all our wonderful nah, executive man, producers. I really use IRC, man. Yeah. Some people are like that. Yeah. Some That's people cool are like too. Way out of their way. Like, nah, man, I got, I got Discord working <laughs> through like whatever it's called now. Like, it's not Lib Purple. What is the uh, game? Is a game still? We'll have to look that up in the after show. Yeah, you can run it. You know, you can patch it through Matrix and all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you next week, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.